breathe, crush it. Mm, Millie Rock. Okay. Hey guys, my name is Neymar and welcome to the Wakanda Perspective. On today's video, I focus on body image, uh, the factors that influence how we look at ourselves, and the apparent growth of body image dissatisfaction. To begin the discussion, I'm going to say how I personally relate to the topic. Uh, when I was growing up, I really struggled with my body image. I was a short, big-headed kid who didn't really fit in and didn't really accept who he was really physically. So I really struggled with this, um, not just physically but mentally, right? Because I really hated myself and I didn't like who, like how I looked. When I saw like you know the cute girls and everything, and I wanted to pursue them, um, more often than not they pursue you know the bigger guys you know guys with the big arms really muscular six and twelve back abs and i didn't really have that right so i remember <laughs> i was hitting the gym like five six times a week um you know eating so much to get those calories to get those big arms and you know get that muscular figure uh and yeah i remember that and but now obviously i obviously slowed that down and everything i mean i still work out right now but i become i began to discover more of who I am and so I'm more sure of myself but I still really struggle with this uh, and I think this is so relevant to talk about today uh, in this digital age of media and technology we're bombarded with a ton of advertisements and more often than not they feature um, this ideal image of both men and women for women typically it is Unfortunately, the thin ideal, you know, for the women who are very uh, skinny, obviously very fit, and have a certain, um, you know, that certain makeup, you know, that Coca-Cola bottle shaped makeup, and for the men, it's typically, you know, very muscular and everything, and I think that even though these are, you know, in a sense good, and they can be chased after for, you know, health and fitness goals, I think um, the bombardment of advertisements is endorsing this, um, and promoting this so heavily, it has changed our perception of, of ourselves. It has made us more dissatisfied in who we are, and it has influenced, you know, unfortunately, uh, eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia, um, and, and for men, you know, who want to get those big arms and, you know, very muscular body, you know, PEDs and steroids, and it leads to such unhealthy lives, both physically and mentally. Okay, so what does research have to say about this? I found that race, gender, and age are three main factors that influence how we look at ourselves and our body image satisfaction, and media has become an overarching, like the main factor between all three. Uh, now before I go on, I have to say as a media and communication student, I do not believe that media has intrinsic power. What I would say is that we shouldn't blame media, we should just blame those behind, um, behind the scenes those who are pushing these, um, you know, the ideal images in these advertisements and in media platforms. Because media, obviously, as you can see, has been used for beautiful things, has been used for social, cultural, and racial activism, have been used for many good campaigns. Right now, you're going through media, you're going through YouTube. That is, well, a medium. So we can't just blame media, just blame those who are pushing, you know, that bad and negative image. Okay, on to the research. Shelley Grab, Monique Ward, and Janet Shibley High performed a meta-analysis of both experimental and correlational studies that focus on the role of media in body image concerns among women. Now, their final sample consisted of 77 different articles, uh, were from 32 different journals and dissertations, and these studies comprised of 15,000 participants and yielded 141 effect sizes. Now, these studies were dated from 1975 to January 2007 and were primarily done in English-speaking countries, namely Australia, United States, and Canada. In examining experimental studies, the researchers found that many of them focus on the difference between how women felt about themselves after viewing the thin ideal image and neutral images such as furniture and other random images. And as some of you may have guessed, the women who have viewed the thin ideal image, which has perpetrated many of the advertisements today, they have a lower body satisfaction levels. For correlation of studies, it was found that frequent exposures to the thin ideal image in media led to both higher levels in body dissatisfaction and eating disorder symptomatology. 
Okay, so the researchers grouped all of these studies into four main categories. 90 studies were done for direct body satisfaction, eight for self-consciousness and objectification, 23 for the internalization of the thin ideal image, and 20 for eating disorders and beliefs. And after all these findings, they have concluded that the exposure to the thin ideal image in media led to small to moderate effects of body image dissatisfaction. Interestingly, a more recent study suggests that there's a growth in body image dissatisfaction among Canadian women. Health science researcher Alison Carter led a team that examined cross-sectional data in the 2011-2012 Canadian Community Health Survey that examined body image statistics. The 2,983 participants were sampled to represent 941,000 young Canadian females. Most of these participants were 20 and 29, and the overall prevalence of body dissatisfaction was 50%, and 25 to 29 year olds were more likely than 12 to 14 year olds to be very dissatisfied in themselves. Now this is interesting because it's tied with internet use. For example, those who had an hour or less of internet uses per week were three times, three times less likely to be very dissatisfied in their bodies than those who had 20 or more hours of internet use per week. Also, those who had 1 to 10 hours of leisure internet use were three times more likely to be satisfied or very satisfied in how they look than those who had 15 or more hours of leisure internet use. Okay, so moving on, uh, I found something very interesting when it comes to age and how it relates to body dissatisfaction. Um, by 2002, it was reported that 1 in 5 women in North America were concerned about their weight, and by 2006, 50% uh, of girls and undergraduate women in university were reportedly dissatisfied with their bodies. And this dissatisfaction, believe it or not, started from age 7, 7 years old. Jungwi Park and Mary Boudet of the Health Staff Division of Stats Canada in Ottawa, Ontario, recently analyzed a 2002 eating attitude study and its correlations with Canadian women. Uh, the sample, it had around 30 to 100 participants, and typically they were 15 years or older. There were seven main factors uh, analyzed in the eating attitude test, namely food preoccupation, body preoccupation, uh, self-imposed dieting, uh, the pair external pressures to eat, fasting, vomiting, and oral control, or how we eat our food. For food preoccupation, women who were 45 years or younger were more concerned about their weight than older women, which led them to be less likely to be preoccupied with food. For self-imposed dieting, women who were 65 years or older were more likely to engage in self-imposed dieting than those between the ages of 45 and 64. And women who were 44 years or younger typically did not endorse self-imposed dieting. Well, as you can see by this research, Age, well, is a vital factor when it comes to body image. That typically, younger women are more concerned about their weight and have negative body image, uh, well, depictions of themselves than older women. Okay, so moving on to the final main factor in body image. Um, I've noticed that I focus so much on women and um, there's the feminine aspect of body image because that's what most research is about. Uh, but as I've said about myself and other men, is that we also have um, body image concerns as well. So I recently found the article that there's just both uh, gender and ethnic concerns in body image. Thomas Gash, Jennifer Morrow, and Joshua Haborski analyzed the change in body image concerns in college students from 1983 to 2001. Um, 22 MBSRQ assessments were analyzed with around 3,200 participants, and most of these assessments were done at Old Dominion University in Virginia. The researchers grouped their participants into black men, black women, non-black men, and non-black women. And they addressed four main categories in body image, namely apparent, overweight preoccupation, apparent orientation, and overall apparent satisfaction. For parents, non-black women's evaluations of themselves significantly decreased from 1983 to 1992, but it increased from 1993 to 2001. And in black women, it increased every year, especially between 1993 to 2001. For overweight preoccupation in non-black women, it just slightly increased over time from like 1983 to around 1989, 1990, and then it slightly uh, decreased over time. And in black women, uh, it just steadily decreased over time, especially between 1993 and 2001. For parents' orientation, which is the investment in one's parents, for both black women and non-black women, it decreased over time. 
And for overall apparent satisfaction, in non-black women, it has slightly decreased from 1990 to 1996, but it increased from 1997 to 2001. And in black women, it just slightly increased over time, especially from 1993 to 1998. It's interesting to note that during this almost 20 year period, that men's evaluations of themselves almost never changed. It remained mostly constant through almost 20 years. Overall, non-black women and black women uh, initially struggled with their body image, but as you can see, it steadily increased over time, which means that they just became more satisfied and more confident in themselves, which is awesome. Um, the research also says that even though there weren't as many male participants as women participants, um, the, consist the consistency in how they view themselves uh, says a lot. It says that, well, men just haven't really changed their perception of themselves over time. Is that a good or bad thing? I, 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 I don't know. Uh, that just depends on their perspectives. But I do believe that more research needs to be done uh, when it concerns men with their body image. Okay, so to wrap it up, um, the constant bombardment of health and fitness advertisements in media portrayed by certain agencies have created, well, a more depressed and dissatisfied state about ourselves. And I'm just coming to say that first off, most of these images are either photoshopped or the models, actresses, or actors have had work done on their body. So honestly, most of these goals we see are unobtainable anyway. So I think we should just encourage one another that we all create it wonderfully and beautifully. Uh, for myself, I do support a healthy lifestyle, so I will support um, healthy eating and exercise. And if you want to choose after health and fitness goals, by all means, I encourage it 150%. All I will say is just don't harm yourself in the process and don't lose who you are.